Hello everybody, welcome to the third Amazon Web Services tutorial video. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys just a few more things and also giving you a quick example of a, uh, a Python script. Again, I did already show you guys once uh, real quick in the beginning, but I'm going to be showing you guys one more time. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just show you a quick file. It's the uh, SSH configuration file. And if you remember back when I was <clears throat> talking about the key, how it even gave you that warning that said, if you don't have this key, you will not be able to connect to your server. Um, so that key, um, basically, it just makes your server a lot more secure. So just even if someone gets your username and your password, they still can't log in because they don't have the key, right? Uh, so it's a good thing to have, but uh, it kind of sucks if you lose that key. So anyway, um, real quick, I am going to show you guys where you can go to fix that issue. Um, I, I don't recommend changing it. I don't plan to change it myself, but I will show you anyway. So if you go into sudo uh, nano and do etc ssh shhd underscore config, that'll bring up the SSH configuration file. Now this is, there's a whole bunch of information here and just for the record, uh, anything with a pound sign is commented out. And so a lot of times you'll have other options and they'll be, you know, um, commented out. So you just uncomment them and you, you, you know, uh, make it show up. But anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. But what we're looking for is password authentication. And then there's also somewhere around here. Well, here's the password authentication. Uh, right now it says no. If you wanted to be able to... Uh, either do like uh, if you wanted to use maybe something similar to how we did the Python tutorial with uh, PySFTP, for example, uh, you would need password authentication to be yes uh, because you wouldn't have a key. But then with Paramico, you can you can actually have a key and um, still use it. So you could leave this as as no, and it's just it's just a good security measure uh, to do it that way. And the last thing, there is one other thing here. I wish I could find it. I think it's closer to the top, but it's for the root login. Uh, you can disable the root login. And, oh yeah, see, like this has permit root login is yes, but somewhere there was, there's also a thing for disable the root login. Uh, I know it's, I'm probably just like missing it, but or at least I'm pretty sure there's something called disable root login um, but you could also just uncomment this you know, permit root login but right now I believe mine is also disabled so I couldn't even log into root even if I wanted uh, anyway uh, so that's that file the sshd config file if you had a mysql file I'd show the conf uh, file for that as well but I don't have one and neither do you at the moment I don't think actually I'm not sure if uh, if MySQL came, I can't even remember, I seem to recall actually MySQL possibly being installed here. Uh, I'm not sure that file exists. Uh, let's do, uh, let's go back a couple directories here. Um, we have e so CD and ETC, let's see what's here. Um, yeah, if we had it, it would be uh, MySQL here. Uh, actually, it would be like right here. Uh, so I don't think we have uh, that pre-installed, so we'd have to install it. But whenever, uh, I'll, I'll eventually get to that, uh, and I'll have to show you guys that configuration file. But yeah, I guess we just don't have one uh, yet. So um, now that we've done that, let's go back again. And we want to go into CD into home. And I already forgot what my username was. EC2 user. So CD into EC2 user. And let's say we want to make an example of a Python file. So we'll just say uh, nano um, runme.py. So we open up this. It's just a runme.py. It's just a text editor basically that opens this up. So then we can say we can define a sample function and now we can have this say print 
this is just a quick example of running uh, a pi script and that's our function and then we'll do sample function here Oops. and uh, sample function. yep save it yes same name and now we can use Python to run run me oops, run me dot pi and that will quickly run the script which just simply prints oops prints it out uh, to console and the other thing you can of course do is you can just type Python and that starts you in the Python um, you know command line that's why you can do Python and then run uh, that specific script um, or you can uh, you know print stuff into here as I showed you in that initial uh, video now that's all fine and dandy uh, because you know all this stuff uh, isn't really that useful right like we don't really see the point of having the server just yet but what you can do with this server is you can start running uh, the like for example like we just showed this Python script and the other thing well actually this wasn't the script this was it uh, and, but the other thing that you can do is make use of what's called a cron tab and so um, so with your cron tab if you go cron tab at uh, dash e oops maybe I'm in the let's see oh I see what the <laughs> I was like why isn't this working uh, we're still in this Python editor so so, <laughs> so that's a good this is a good tutorial how the heck do you get out of this editor uh, to get out of stuff like this it's either control C or control D normally in this case it's going to be controlled uh, shoot I don't even know I would want to say control C normally but that's just going to be an, a keyboard interrupt so I so in this case I suppose control D but if you hit control D again usually that'll log you out um, I'll try that right at the end of this video because I don't want to get screwed up right uh, during this during this video <laughs> so I'll do it at the end but I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll log you out uh, but anyway uh, so the cron tab again so cron tab dash e uh, and that launches this and this is your cron tab and in here you can specify various times that you want something to run so you could either run something every minute you could run something every one hour and five minutes you could run something at every day at 450 p.m. and so on it's a really useful thing to have um, so definitely something that I'll be showing you guys pretty soon here, uh, the cron tab and, and how to use it and how to set it up. Because again, it can be kind of confusing when you look at it, uh, how, to, how to work it. But anyway, it's pretty cool stuff. So when you get into the cron tab, uh, I forget what the de I think the default editor is like, uh, is it Pico or it's something like that. So it's, it's a different editor than you're used to. And so to get out of this, you have to do hold shift colon and then do uh, quit and that gets you out of there. Uh, the other thing that you can do um, is do like editor equals nano and then do cron tab uh, dash e uh, cron, oops uh, cron tab space dash e and that'll open up your cron tab in nano instead and so it's a little easier to use because sometimes uh, can get kind of annoying going from different editors. But anyways, uh, so those are just a few more basics to uh, the things with Amazon Web Services and really everything we've done so far is, is actually uh, you know having your own web server anywhere really. Any VPS, this is pretty much how it goes. So uh, those are the basics. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.